Now, why is a mass movement of people being allowed to occur across America's southern border? Why are the American authorities simply letting this happen? Is it part of some grand conspiracy or could there be possibly a simpler explanation? By the end of this video, I will have persuaded you, I hope, that there is a simpler explanation and that it is part of the very nature of the liberal mind that this must be allowed to happen. And this is because the liberal, to a certain extent, is a born traitor. Hello, 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 and welcome to this edition of A Quick Pipe. Now, why is a mass movement of people being allowed to occur across America's southern border? Well, I refer you to a very interesting paper which sets this out, called Ideological Differences in the Expanse of the Moral Circle by Waits et al., which was published in Nature Communications in 2019. And what they explain about the nature of the liberal mind is as follows. We humans are pack animals, but we must attempt to ascend the pack hierarchy because it is at the top of the pack hierarchy that we are more likely to get more resources, more likely to get more mates, more likely to pass on our genes. This means we have two sets of moral foundations, binding foundations or group oriented foundations because we must be a cohesive group to fight other groups and individually oriented foundations that allow us to climb the hierarchy of the pack. The binding foundations are loyalty, that is to say in-group loyalty, obedience to authority, and sanctity, sanctity versus disgust, i.e. we tend to sacralize that which is good for the group and we tend to uh, taboo and say is disgusting that which is bad for the group. Then there are the individually oriented foundations. These are harm avoidance, i.e. If you, if, you, if you are against harm in general, you avoid harm to yourself. And equality, i.e. If you, if you move in favour of equality, then you get proportionately more of the resources. So these are the five moral foundations. Now, conservatives and liberals differ in the extent to which these foundations are important. Conservatives value all five of these moral foundations about equally. I'm not talking about extreme conservatives, just conservatives in general. All five of these moral foundations equally. Liberals only value the individually oriented foundations. They only care about harm avoidance and equality, and they don't care about the group oriented foundations. So this is showing you a fundamental difference between conservatives and liberals. Conservatives are ultimately group oriented. They are concerned about binding foundations as well as the individually oriented foundations, which means they can empathise with the liberal, but the liberal is only concerned about individually oriented foundations, which means that he basically cannot empathise with the conservative. So there is asymmetrical empathy. So what this means then is liberals are basically individualists, they are not group oriented, liberals are evolved to climb the, to the top of the pack. They are not cooperative people, they are selfish, they may signal cooperation. They will of course say, oh I'm really really in favour of equality for everybody and creating a lovely society. But they're, but they're, they're not really. What that is a, a means of doing is climbing to the top of the pack hierarchy, uh, particularly if you are high in mental instability, and they, they will tend to be liberals, that's been demonstrated in a number of papers, then you fear a fair fight, you fear conflict, and so the way that you get power is via a covert means. You virtue signal. How do you virtue signal? You virtue signal about equality and harm avoidance, and therefore by covert means you reach the top of the pack. I'm going to keep saying loud and clearly that I am a feminist. So this is the clear thing. Conservatives are group oriented, liberals are individually oriented, they're about themselves, they're about getting power for themselves as individuals and over everybody else in the, in the society. And the way that they, they do that will tend to be to promote to virtue signal about equality and harm avoidance. They don't really care about those things, they care about themselves. And that's demonstrated in the research that indicates that conservatives are higher in agreeableness uh, than, than our liberals. I mean, conserv and, and our conservatives are more mentally stable uh, than our liberals. Conservatives are essentially nicer people than liberals. But liberals will try and come across as nice as a cunning way to get to the top of the group. Now, um, consistent with this uh, difference in orientation, when conservatives feel excluded, feel challenged, feel unhappy, the paper indicates, they will tend to turn on other groups. So if a conservative feels threatened, feels unhappy, feels excluded, he will turn on other groups. He will direct his anger towards another group and try and you know, destroy that group to get more for his group and thus him. 
whereas when liberals feel excluded, they will turn on their own group. They will turn on members of their own group. Folks like me who were Caucasian of European descent for the first time in 2017 will be in an absolute minority. That's not a bad thing. That's a, that's a source of our strength. Which is showing you that they are oriented towards not the good of their group, but towards the good of themselves. Now, this paper makes a very, very interesting point, which is the nature of the moral circle when you compare conservatives and liberals. Who do you identify with? Who do you identify with? And what you who, do, who do you feel feelings for the most? And what you find is that conservatives will tend to identify with those that are relatively genetically similar to them in a kind of series of concentric circles that, that emanate from self. They will identify with their family before they identify with their extended family. They will identify with their extended family before they identify with, let's say, their ethnic group, their, 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 their people. They will identify with their ethnic or their people before they identify with their, their, their race, let's say. They will identify with their race before they identify with you know, humanity as a whole. They will identify with humanity as a whole before they identify with animals, and on it goes. Their, their, their identification is to those that are genetically similar, or to those that are in groups that are to which they are central. With liberals, it is quite the opposite. They, their moral circle relates to the groups that are more distant from self. So they will often tend to identify with, let's say, another ethnic group over their own ethnic group, or another social class over their own social class, or another racial group over their own racial group, or even in extreme cases of animal rights activists, another species over their own species. Now, what this means, of course, is that they are born traitors. They are born collaborators. If you identify with another group over your own, then you will be better at collaborating with that group in your own individual interest in order to gain power over the in-group of which you are a part. So an obvious example, a member of the upper class wants to gain power in his society over all of the other upper class people that are running the society, what does he do? He identifies strongly with the working class. This gives him a coalition, a power coalition, and it permits him to attain greater status among his own class, among the upper class. No, so what's what's something that you always carry with you? Hot just, sauce. Now listen, yes. I just want you to know, people are going to see this and say, okay, she's pandering to black people. <laughs> <laughs> Is it working? And you see this again and again in history. In Finland, for example, so many of the people who were, who, were run, who were in charge of the Finnish national awakening, in which Finnish nationalism came to the fore in Finland, were in fact Swedish-speaking Finns, who were collaborating to get power, among other Swedish-speaking Finns, with Finns. Um, in much the same way, uh, if you, uh, a similar situation, if you are left-wing uh, and you are a member of the elite uh, in, a, in a Western society, then what you can do is you can, you can identify with, let's say, a member of a different ethnic group, and therefore you could build up a coalition, build up a power base of supporters with that ethnic group in order to attain power over you know, your own group of which you are a part. So this is what liberals do. They identify with the out-group, and in doing so, they are better at collaborating with the outgroup in order to attain power, in order to attain individual status over their own group. Now, it follows that they will want to have, they will want to bring into the society more and more members of outgroups with whom they can collaborate in order to attain power over the broader group of which they are a part. And this will be particularly the case if the group of which they are a part are not having children. And we know that is the case. There is a strong herit reasonable heritability to liberalism and conservatism between about 0.4 and 0.6. Liberals are not having children. Conservatives are having children. So without immigration, liberalism basically dies out. And these people do not have a means of attaining power. So what they have to do is bring into the society people with whom they can collaborate. Um, those people, it will be in their interests to want a liberal society. It will, of course, it won't be in their interests to want a society that is hostile to outsiders if you are an immigrant. So it will be in their interests to vote for and to help to create a more liberal society. Um, and, and they will therefore, and they will, uh, and the members of the, uh, the liberal white upper class will, will collaborate with them in order to achieve that. Now, that doesn't have to be a plan. That doesn't have to be a plan that they sit down and think through. They may do. They may do, 
but it doesn't have to be. It could simply be an unconscious act because that is how, or a subconscious act, that is how liberals are acting. They are subconsciously attracted to people, to groups, that their moral circle, those they care about, are those that are different from them. What's up, white people and the rest of you motherfuckers? I'm starting a trend. Look what I got. One, two. Oh, show them the bag. Gotta see the bag. Hashtag apology lunch. Go find yourself a black person and buy them some food. Hashtag apology lunch. And so therefore, of course, they will empathize with them and want to bring them into the society. And they will do that because it allow because then they can collaborate with those people, which they are adapted to do. They are literally adapted. They are born traitors. They are adapted to collaborate with outsiders in order to attain power over their own in group. And that is how we can expect them to operate. And that would explain the political inertia with regard to what is happening at the southern border and in other areas of the world as well. Uh, remember to go over to jollyheretic.com where you can find our uncensored videos that our YouTube mutant overlords won't let you watch. And I will see you all soon. And goodbye!